Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the Jan 2008 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so we have some information here. Trappers Company Limited has permission to issue 40,000 ordinary shares and $1,050 preference shares at 15%. So that's authorized share capital. 15%, by the way, is the dividend rate for the preference shares. And the $50 is the par value for the preference shares. We aren't given any information about the par value for the ordinary shares, but let's read on. On November 30th, 07, the company has the following balances in its ledger. Okay, let's take a look. We have about five things here. First up, 28,000 ordinary shares, 56,000. So it looks like the par value is $2 per share. How did I get that? If we have 28,000 shares out and the value, the dollar value of those 28,000 shares is $56,000, 28,000 by two is 56. Simple. Now, share premium account, ordinary shares. Now, the share premium is if we issued the shares for a price above the par value. So that's what this is indicating here, okay? So it looks like we issued it for $5 each because um, 84 plus 56 is 140. 140 divided by 28 is $5. So the issue price was $5, which means the premium per share is $3. 84,000 divided by 28. And yo, I feel like I'm going a bit too detailed here because we don't use any of those for any question. <laughs> Next, we have 800, 15%, $50 preference shares, 40,000, right? So 800 by 50 is the 40,000. Retained earnings, 45,000, 105% debentures, $10,000. Okay. Next, on that date, November 30th, 07, Trappers Company de Limited, sorry, declared that on December 31st, they would pay the following. Annual interest on the debentures, dividends on preference shares, and a dividend of 10% on ordinary shares. Okay, it then goes on to say, the, sorry, let me just highlight that again, right? The declaration also noted that the remaining 12,400 of net profit after appropriations would be added to the appropriate reserve account. Well, that would be retained earnings, right? Okay, so part A has five things they want us to do. State one difference between an ordinary share and a preference share, one difference between an ordinary share and debenture, and they want the annual interest on debentures, the dividend to be paid to preference shareholders, and the amount of the original net profit, all for 10 months. Okay, so let's start with stating one difference between an ordinary share and a preference share. And you know me, I'm not, just, I'm, not, I'm not just going to give you one. So we have a little table here. Well, a table-ish thing, right? Ordinary shares, preference shares. So ordinary shares bestow voting rights to shareholders. Preference shares do not usually bestow voting rights to shareholders. Ordinary shares, well, they do not have a fixed rate of dividend, but, a, but, but um, preference shares do. They provide a fixed rate of dividend. Ordinary shares, the dividend is paid after the preference dividend. Preference shares, dividend is paid before ordinary dividend. And for ordinary shares, the investment is repaid last, if at all, in the event of a liquidation. Whereas for preference shares, the investment is repaid before ordinary shares in the event of a liquidation. If you know any more differences or you have a better articulation of any of those, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll pin the best list. I think they allow me to pin three things. So the three best comments. Cool. Go. All right. Next, they said to state one difference between an ordinary share and the debenture. So again, I'm not just going to give you one. Pull up that table. There we go. <coughs> ordinary shares. This is a form of equity or ownership capital. A debenture is a form of debt capital or a liability. Ordinary shares pay dividends to shareholders. Debentures pay interest to debenture holders. Ordinary shares allow shareholders voting rights, whereas debentures do not convey voting rights to debt holders. And ordinary shares, like we said, investment is repaid last, if at all, in the event of a liquidation. Debentures, the amount is repaid before ordinary and preference shares in the event of a liquidation. And if it's a secure debenture, it's definitely going to be paid. Unsecured debentures may not, but that's stuff you might hear more about if you go to Form 6, right? But it's not necessarily anything difficult. Okay, the third part says to calculate the annual interest on the debenture. So if you go up a little bit, we have 105% debentures, 5% being the interest rate, and we're going to multiply that by the value of the debentures outstanding. So value of debentures is 10,000 
interest rate five percent, and therefore the interest on the debentures, interest expense is five hundred dollars. Next item: calculate the preference dividend to be paid to shareholders. Okay, so we have eight hundred fifteen percent fifty dollar preference shares. Dividend rate is fifteen percent. The par value of preference shares is forty thousand. So all we have to do is multiply the par value of forty thousand by the dividend rate of fifteen percent to get six thousand dollars. Now this last part here is the tricky part. Calculate the amount of the original net profit. Now, what do they mean by that? Well, this line here tells us that the, the, the remaining 12.4 of net profit would be added to the appropriate reserve account. The remaining 12.4 of net profit is the, the retained profit from the current year, which is going to be added to the retained profits up in the, well, at start. How do we get retained profit for the current year? We start with the net profit, the item they want. We subtract the appropriations and end up there with the 12.4. So, if we have the 12.4, we have to add back the appropriations to get back the original net profit. So, if we have the 12.4, we're going to add back the two well, the dividend, the, the ordinary dividend, preference dividend. So, the preference dividend we just calculated was six thousand dollars. The ordinary dividend, what it was that? They said dividends of ten percent on ordinary shares, and it's ten percent on the par value of ordinary shares of fifty-six thousand. That's fifty-six hundred. So, if we add back those dividends to the retained earnings, we're going to get the net profit before the appropriation or the original net profit. Okay, that's part A to the question. Let's check out part B. Part B asks us to draw up the liabilities and capital section of the balance sheet of Trappers Limited, identifying clearly any current liabilities, long-term liabilities, authorized share capital and issued share capital. Now, first of all, they said liabilities and capital. We know if it's an order of permanence, the capital will come before the liabilities. And then we no, we no longer call it long-term liabilities, we call it um, non-current liabilities. So we have a little couple of shifts in terminology and we also have to show authorized share capital. So let's start by heading up properly, Trappers Company Limited. So I put statement of financial position instead of balance sheet uh, as at 30th November 07. Now, we're going to start with the share, the, sorry, head up capital and liabilities, my bad. And then of course, share capital. So we're going to start with the authorized share capital, which the question gives us at the very top. We have 40,000 ordinary shares, and we know it's $2 per share, right? So 40,000 by 2 is 80. And then, of course, we have the $1,050 preference shares, and 1,000 by 50 is 130. But as the, as the authorized share capital, that's kind of closed off by itself. It's not added to anything else, okay? Let's go from here now. We have issued share capital. Now, the question tells us here, exactly what we need to put, right? We have the 28,000 ordinary shares, 56,000, and the 850 dollar preference shares at 40,000. So we're gonna put those items in. Ordinary shares, preference shares, 96,000. Right, now we have the reserves. So the share premium account is a reserve, as is the retained earnings of, well, the 45,800 was the value before we did the appropriation account. And remember they told us the 12,004, this item here, Right, would be added to the appropriate reserve account. So we're going to take the share premium of 84 and add the retained earnings. Hold on, why we have 12.4? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This was supposed to be 45,800 plus 12,400. Right, so that's supposed to be 57, sorry, 58,2. Let's just double check. So 45,800 plus 12,400, 58,2. Right, there you go. So adding those together give us 142,2. Adding that to the share capital, the par value of share capital will give us 238200 for total capital and reserves. And now we can deal with liabilities. We'll start with the non-current liabilities. What are those? Well, the debentures. Debentures are long-term loans, hence non-current liabilities. The value there, I think, was 10000 Right. So we're going to put that there. And of course, current liabilities. So where is it going to come from? Right. These three items here, the interest on the debentures, the dividends on preference shares, and the dividends on ordinary shares. It said here, this sentence says, on November 30th, the current balance sheet date, they declared that they're going to pay those items on December 31st, one month from the current balance sheet date. So if you say, I'm going to pay this in a month, you have now brought on yourself a liability, which you'll pay off in a month. Therefore, those are all current liabilities. So... There's no particular order in which you have to list them. The debenture interest, now we calculated two of these things in the previous part of the question, right? It was 10% of 50,000, sorry, 5% of 10,000, my bad. And then we had the 
preference dividend, 6,000, that was 15% of, I think, 40. Now, the ordinary dividend, it said it was 10% on ordinary shares, and the par value of the ordinary shares is 56,000. So that is going to be 5,600. When we add the liabilities, the current liabilities together, we're going to get 12,001. We're going to add that to the non-current subtotal to give us total liabilities of 221, and we're going to add that to the total for capital and reserves, which will give us 260,300. Right. And you know what? That's the end of the question. All right, guys. So there you have it. That's the solution for question seven from the Jan 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions on it, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.